Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's ApplyWave School Spotlight. So happy to have you joining us and watching this today. I'm going to wait a few seconds just to see if we have anyone joining in live. Um, if you are watching this live, please note that the session will be recorded. So if you have to jump out for any reason, you'll be able to come back and watch. Um, also for our live viewers throughout this session, if you have any questions uh, for our guest, feel free to submit those questions in the comment section. And at the end, we will do our best to answer as many questions as possible. Um, so again, feel free to submit any questions for our guest in the comment section and we will answer them at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to welcome today's guest. We have Isaac Sanchez from University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio, Texas. So hi, Isaac. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Mackenzie. Thanks for having me. It's, it's really an honor to be here with you all. No, we're so excited. We just spoke um, with uh, the the high schools that are linked with you, partnered with you. Um, so Incarnate Word High School in St. Anthony Catholic High School, we spoke with them yesterday. So we are on a San Antonio, Texas spree, which is so exciting. Um, so I appreciate you joining us today. So again, students, we are here with Isaac from the University of the Incarnate Word. Mm -hmm. Texas. And um, to get started, Isaac, I think you had a video you wanted to share with everyone. Sure. Um, let me go ahead and share that. All right. Here we go. Oh, I was muted. That is awesome. It looks like such a cool, like traditional, typical university experience. I love it. Yeah, it's it's a cool video, and I'm getting goosebumps right now because uh, I can see some classmates there, and I just uh, miss the campus. You know, we we've been out for a while since uh, the pandemic started, so we've been working from home for most part, and I can't wait to get back. Yeah, and you studied at the University of the Incarnate Word, correct? correct? Correct, yeah. I finished my master's in business administration over there. So I can speak firsthand about, you know, our amazing campus. It's it's just beautiful, green areas. It's uh, uh, We have great athletic facilities, and obviously the academic program is top-notch. Awesome. So, you know, from your experience and your perspective, What's there to do on campus? Like, what's it feel like when you're a student walking around every day? 
Yeah, sure. Well, first, let's, let me start saying that San Antonio is a beautiful place to be at. We have perfect weather year round. You know, it's not like uh, if you go up north, you're getting snow right now and it's freezing cold. San Antonio is not that bad, uh, perfect weather. And we're about 10 minutes from downtown, which is a prime location. We have all the amenities of a big city and still we get that feeling of countryside and, and kind of like a, like a close community. So there's a lot of things to do. We have uh, all kinds of restaurants and, and I'm sure you've heard about the Tex-Mex culture, which oh, is yeah. fantastic. You know, food <laughs> is delicious and lots of things to do. So tell me, you know, for our, for our viewers, Isaac is from Mexico originally. So <laughs> speaking from a Mexican, what do you think about Tex-Mex food? Is it comparable to real Mexican food? What's it well, like? Describe it to our Mexican students <laughs> what to expect out of Tex-Mex. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's unique on its own. Obviously, you have, uh, we're very really close to the border and, and the culture is, is quite similar. But yeah, um, I would say it has uh, a little spice that it's different and, and I quite liked by now. At first I was like, well, this is not really a taco, but, but you know what, with the time you get used to it and, and it's, it's great. Margaritas are my favorite though. <laughs> yeah. What about, what's your opinion on crunchy taco shells? You know, we exactly. love crunchy taco shells in the U.S. That's, that's what I was thinking right now, because at first I was like, this is not really a taco, but you get used to it, and, and I quite like it now. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a tostada folded in on itself, which makes it easier to eat than a regular tostada, I guess. <laughs> More convenient, for sure. Yeah, too funny. Awesome. Um, so tell me about some of the activities and things students can get involved in on campus. I mean, from the video, it seems like there's a lot going on. Um, it looks like a pretty big campus, too. So I imagine you have lots of organizations and things. So tell me what students can do um, during the week on weekends and all of that. Sure. Uh, our campus hosts about 10,000 students uh, that we have currently enrolled. So yeah, it's a big campus, but still you get the opportunity to have small personalized education. That means, you know, you get, really get to know your professor and your professor gets to know you. So we're talking about uh, average class size of uh, 15 to 20 students. And, and that that's very unique. It helps um, connect with people and interact with, with your classmates. And fun things to do, uh, obviously athletics. I'm, I'm a big fan of athletics and we have division one sports. And I can talk about American football, soccer, um, track and field. I mean, a bunch of different things that you can go and observe but also if you're that type of athlete division one athlete it's a great experience so, and that makes us very unique because we bring in a lot of athletes from all over the world and and these guys are really like superstars you know they they compete at, at the national level and in world cups and stuff like that for their different disciplines so we're very lucky to have that type of uh, student caliber in our mm -hmm. campus. And what are some of the most popular or the, the, the most well-performing athletic programs at Incarnate Word? Is it mainly a football school, American football, basketball? What's kind of the top thing? Well, I would say soccer is, is pretty decent. We, we've had a lot of success in the past with that. And just recently, we hired a new coach and we won the championship, well, the conference championship, which uh, I think it was the, I think last year was the first time the university accomplished that. So it was a great time to be on campus because, you know, the stands were packed and everybody was feeling that cutting out vibe. Everybody was wearing their jerseys. And I'm sure you know about this, how important it is to feel that you belong to something bigger than yourself and and, and the yeah. fact that you can proudly say you're a cardinal and wear your colors and stuff like that it's, it's very cool 
Yeah, that's the thing that I always try to explain to um, to our students is like when you're in a university, the the sports and in you know going to games and all of that it becomes such a big part of your identity and and your community. Um, you know, being on that campus and being a student of that school, like you get to say that you are a Cardinal um, or whatever mascot it may be, depending on the school you go to. But it really, it, it's a special experience and just the energy when you're at a game and, and especially if you're at a division one school, like these are the games that people pay money to go and watch. Like these are not just like teeny tiny little, little, little events, you know, division one is, is, as big as it gets for college athletics. So, um, you know, it, it, it would be fun to be a fan when you're studying here, but then also if you're an athlete, I mean, you have that opportunity. Of course it's difficult, but you have the opportunity, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, you have some different options for student athletes, correct? Absolutely. So you're, you're hundred percent correct on that. It's, it's very unique. I don't know if we have something like that in Mexico where you really feel proud about the, your alma mater, your university, and and especially when it comes to sports division one, it's uh, such a high level that you know makes uh, the whole college experience more meaningful. Now, when we talk about division one, we've noticed that only a small margin of athletes will make that transition from high school to division one. And, and we're talking about less than 10%. So, you know, with that in mind, we were thinking, well, what we can do with all those athletes that are really good academically, but also have been, you know, practicing their sport since they were, I don't know, 10 years old, 15 years old. And, and how can we continue with that progress? Because they're really passionate about their sport and they really want to reach their fullest potential within that. Uh, discipline. So we came up with club sports, which honestly has been around for quite a long time, almost five to six years in our university. And, and we're trying to create a club sports powerhouse where athletes that maybe have not reached the level of division one can still enroll in our programs, compete against other universities you know, have regular practices and in a sense mimic what's done at the division one level. And and obviously when they get to put their gear on and, and step out step out on the field, have the lights on and, and all that. It's a cool experience that not many not many people get to get to feel and experience in, in college. So yeah, and I feel like sorry to interrupt guys. I feel like the benefit here, you know, again, as Isaac mentioned before, Division one athletics, like the players who actually are on the field playing, you have to be really, 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 really good. You know, you have to be the best. And, um, you know, so even if you're an excellent athlete, but you don't have that, you know, recognition in your country, you don't have the film to back it up, or maybe you do, but you're just not as good as those top starting players have to be to be on the field. You know, you might get to wear the jersey and be standing on the sidelines, but you might never get to actually play. But with with club sports, you have the opportunity to get out there and still practice and still be on a team at a school with a wonderful athletics program. So I think that's a huge opportunity there. And then I see here there's some um, scholarship opportunities as well for those athletes. Absolutely. So uh, once you apply to our school and we review your application, you can earn up to $2,000 on additional scholarship on top of whatever academics you can get. So I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but at the incarnate world, you can earn up to $20,000 on academic scholarship, depending on your grades. So if you're a high caliber student and you have that passion for your sport and, and and uh, in a way you've been practicing for quite some time, I'm sure you can fight for a spot at club sports, which uh, let me tell you, is gonna make your experience way more meaningful. You're gonna feel part of a team. Uh, you're gonna create a support network that coming as an international student, it's very important to have from the get go, you know? You, it's, it's easier to make friends. It's easier to get advice from classmates. It's easier to just go by in the city, and and 
at the end of the day, I believe that it's not all about what you learn in the classroom, but what you can experience outside of it. And, and sports um, has that magic of making your experience way more meaningful. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. And another good point to make is um, if you do pursue the club sports, that's something that'll look really good on your resume. Um, after you graduate, you know, showing that you're able to work in a team or you represent leadership, you know, athletics can really show so much more that um, reflects into the real world. Um, so I think that's another important thing to point out. This is something that would look great on your resume. Absolutely. Thanks for highlighting that. Um, club sports has that uniqueness in a sense that you can become a leader of the team. You can help out with budgets. You can sort out logistics when we get to travel and all those things you can put on the curriculum on your, on your resume. So, um, obviously you are developing skills that mm -hmm. are transferable to not only the classroom, but later on when you graduate and you go out and uh, go look for jobs, it's, it's uh, a good selling point to say that you've been part uh, of the team that, you know, have competed for championships, but not only that, you have worked with budgets, you can show that you have leadership skills, team management skills, and that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Awesome. So moving on a little bit to more of the academic side of things, um, I want to learn about some of the, the top academic programs. So we covered the activities, we covered the athletics, but what can students study and what are some of your main programs at the University of the Incarnate Word? Absolutely. We have more than 90 programs at the undergrad level, and obviously we have also uh, master degrees. But top programs, I would say uh, graphic design, business. We have a fantastic uh, music program, kinesiology, sports management. I mean, you name it. We have all kinds of uh, degrees for you to, to study, to, to feed your um, interests. And I would say top programs, biology, uh, health science, business, and, and sports management as well. Communication is, is massive. Since we have division one programs, you can cover those games. You can have that experience of broadcasting games and stuff like that. So that's- Yeah, that's, cool. that's such a good point. You know, if you're interested in, in journalism or, um, you know, being being one of the commentators on ESPN or something. I mean, what better what better uh, school to study a program like that in, where you can, you know, um, be at these Division One top games? Like for those of you watching, again, if you don't understand the Division One, Division Two thing, the Division One games are typically the games that you can watch on like ESPN and Sports Center. Um, so that's that's the level we're talking about here. So awesome opportunities. Um, now what about work, internships? The students get those types of opportunities as well when they're studying their programs? Absolutely, yes. And, and let me say that some of our programs require that internship component and, and the university, your professor is gonna help you uh, connect those dots for you to have the, that real experience. So we have developed really good relationships with local businesses and, and local companies that know UIW students outperform some of the other universities in the region. And, and we have like uh, really good feedback from them. So yeah, we encourage all international students. It's, it's probably uh, useful to highlight that you as an international are allowed to um, to engage in this type of internships and legally work in the United States through a process that we call OPT. So having that one year of experience working abroad is uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and you did that too, correct? Sorry, can you say that again? You, you did the OPT program yourself, correct? Yeah, correct. I was able to help out as an assistant coach at, oh, wow. at a soccer program. So... It was it was fantastic and and that's why I fell in love with with the game and and I tried to stay involved with it, but the real uh, work experience it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome! 
So exciting. Um, all right, so moving on a little bit to kind of the nitty gritty um, about, you know, becoming a student at University of the Incarnate Word. Like, do you require anything, um, you know, like the SAT test, essays, things like that? What do students need to be accepted? The process is fairly simple. You need to submit your application online and and we're gonna ask for your transcripts. That way we can we can look at your rates and see for what type of money you can qualify for on scholarship. And and honestly, it's quite simple. The application form can be done online and maybe through you guys, you guys can facilitate that. SAT is not required with test line this year, which opens up a massive opportunity for students to earn academic scholarship. I don't know what was your experience, but I had to sit on the SAT exam and it was a nightmare. You know, it's such a long and hard exam and I wanted to cry when, when, when I did it. So not having to do the SAT, it's a great opportunity to get up to $20,000. That otherwise yeah. you'll have to really study and be very dedicated on, on your, your exam. Yeah, and that's a huge, that's a huge advantage as well, students, if you're watching this, um, the fact that you don't need the SAT. Um, there are many schools right now who are not requiring the SAT anymore for admissions, but a lot of them do require it for scholarships. Um, so it's nice that you can be considered for these uh, scholarships at Incarnate Word without having to take the SAT. So I think um, that's definitely a huge advantage if you know you're not a very good test taker or those kinds of things give you anxiety, um, this is a good option for you to consider. Wonderful. So again, for our viewers, if you have any final questions for Isaac, feel free to submit them in the, in the comment section. We are about to wrap up. So Isaac, while we're waiting for any questions to roll in, do you have any final words for international students who may be considering studying in the US or studying at um, your university? Anything you wanna say? Absolutely. So I would like to talk to those students that maybe are, you know, two years uh, before finishing their high school to really focus on your academics, try to work on improving your grades, because that's really going to open up opportunities for you on, on the scholarship side. I know that in Latin America, especially, you know, a lot of guys are looking for those scholarships. And my advice is start working now on those rates and start doing your research, you know, go on their websites, try to find the academic programs that you're interested on, do your research and apply, 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 make a list of options. And hopefully if you have UIW in your list, I'll be more than happy to connect with you and, and answer any questions you might have. And I'm sure you guys will help us connect with those students as well. So. Um, I'm available 24 seven. I hope uh, this little info session was helpful and, and we're very thankful for the opportunity, Mackenzie. Awesome. So again, I think you made a great point. Researching early and starting early is a great tip for our international students. Um, you know, start, start just by looking online and, and you can go to ApplyWave dot com to find information about um, your different opportunities, one of them being University of Incarnate Word. Um, and again, as Isaac mentioned, we are here to help. So you don't need to be afraid um, if you're looking online. What I always say is we are the humans behind the screen. So um, if you need any assistance, both Isaac and I are here to help and we'd be happy to connect the dots as well. So Isaac, hang on here with me for a second, but I'm going to um, quickly show how students can find Incarnate Word on ApplyWave um, and then I'll bring you back to say goodbye. So students quickly, I want to share how you can find out more information and um, begin the application process at University of the Incarnate Word. Um, so here I'm just going to applywave.com um, at Incarnate Word, you can find programs uh, for both bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. Um, I'm going to show you the bachelor's degrees here. So where it says, where do you want to study? You can just start typing University of the Incarnate Word, select that option, click search. 
And here you go. Here's the lovely school profile. You can click on that name to see more information, um, information about um, admissions requirements and test scores. Um, here you can see the list of academic programs, where they're at on the map, um, some awesome pictures of that beautiful campus and the amazing things that you can do uh, when you're studying there um, with some cool videos as well. And if you do want to move forward with your application and start the process, again, myself and my team will be behind the scenes um, and we'll be connecting you with Isaac to move forward. So all you need to do is click the apply button and we'll be here to help you with everything. Um, all right, so Isaac, thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, students, again, we're here to help. And um, thank you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure, Mackenzie. Thank you so much. And we keep in touch. Awesome.